Hey, welcome, Pastor Jeff. You know, again, we have a show on repentance, a gift of repentance. Yes, it's not a punishment. It's not some theory that, you know, some theologian thought up somewhere. It's a gift of God himself, the God, the one in Christ, the one who rose from the dead. And he gives it as a gift to you and me in the same way that he shed his own blood as a gift to you. He would have done that if you were the only human being on the planet. Hey, and by the way, <clears throat> if you haven't yet made a, what we call a, quote, decision for Christ, today's the day to do it. Here's what you have to do. You have to first really sincerely repent. You have to really say, you know, I keep sinning. This is not who I could be. I want to be more like Christ. I want to be more like him. I want to find that good side of me, if you will. Well, the truth is, in us, there's not that goodness. It's in him that we get goodness. Once you really basically say, I'm done with my own agenda. I'm done with being a constant sinner. I want Christ. I want him to cover me and change me, transform me into a new person. And he will do that. If you've repented, you then come into the kingdom just by your belief Yes, that he rose from the dead. You believe it and you want him to be Lord of your life. If you've sincerely said that in any similar words, it's really your heart that says, I'm just done. I need to repent. I need to honor that little or not so little conviction is really the word we use in, in Christianity. It's the way that your heart goes, ow, yikes, that was wrong. I really hurt her feelings, or I really should never have said that lie, or I didn't need to take that drug, or I didn't need to watch those porno movies on, uh, the, on the computer. Whatever the issue, we all have issues, that you, you've decided that's enough. That's repentance. Plus, repentance includes showing that change of your character to other people. Is that amazing? Yes. God then, when you come into his kingdom, repenting and believing, so it's repenting and believing in Christ, a miracle happens. His Holy Spirit now lives within you. Wow. What an amazing transformation. So it's not about going to a church. It's not about being a nice person. It's about repenting from the old person that is always being rebellious and sinning in one form or another, and then believing, really wanting to have a transformed life through Christ. You believe he's the only way, and he is the only way to transform your life. You choose it. When you choose it, he then comes in and then lives in you and will begin to transform your life. You can remove the old patterns of your life whatever those are. It could be anger or rebellion or immoral sexual practices. It, it could be, you know, a whole laundry list of things. The Holy Spirit will remove that um, as you talk to him. You can now talk to him. The Word of God says you can abide in him, A-B-I-D-E. You can hang out really like the best friend you ever had. You can, you can full-time be in Christ through the Holy Spirit. Now we're going to look at this key chapter of the book of John today. I love that book. If you're a new beginner, you may want to just begin in the gospel, the good news according to John. John was a young man when he met Jesus. He was at the Last Supper, the one who laid his head on Jesus's heart or chest. He was that close and during the crucifixion, that horrific event that actually took place, we've seen it in the movie called The Passion, John was the only man who stood beneath the cross. Now, some brave women were there, but John was the only man. And he then lived to an old age 
and wrote this gospel talking about his life with Christ. And then he also was the vessel for the Holy Spirit, the risen Christ, to speak through John on the Isle of Patmos decades later. And he gave us the book of Revelation of these end times. And John also wrote several beautiful letters at the end of the New uh, Testament, too. Letters to you and me that we could speak. There's a first John, a second, and even a third letter from John before we get to the book of Revelation. And I'm going to talk about one of my favorite things to do, pruning. As a young boy, maybe I was 10, 11, one of my friends was named Roger. One day after school, he said, hey, come on over to my house. My dad's going to be there and we're going to prune some trees. And I went, wow, pruning trees. I'd never thought about that. Well, his dad knew what he was doing, taught us how to do this. We strapped a special kind of saw onto our waist and we started then climbing this old tree that had some dead branches. And I got up there in that tree and I pulled out that saw and for the first time I saw, hey, kind of pun intended, I saw <laughs> the fun of pruning. It's fun. It's fun. And I saw the purpose. You get rid of the dead branches and the tree grows much more healthy. You see the difference? Yeah. And see the connection in our own lives. When you and I get rid of the old sins, we have more abundant life. Well, I've always loved pruning ever since then. I still do it. I love it. It's, it's, it's healthy, healthy for that plant. And now look at how the Lord describes this here in John chapter 15. So Jesus says, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that doesn't bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Wow. Do you get that? Yes. So repentance is a blessing. You spend time alone with the Lord, the Holy Spirit. You've come into the kingdom. You're learning how to abide and hang out with him. And you say, Lord, I, I, I'm still blown away at how you're present. I had no idea that you were real. I thought, you know, people just went to this church and that's what they did. And I see you want to have something totally different. You want to really change my life. You want to live through me. And you want me to live a godly life. You have a plan for my life. And, and so, Lord, would you help me? I know I need to clean up. I have a lot of things. I need to clean up my language. I need to clean up what I'm looking at. I need to clean up my voice as I'm, you know, often angry or whatever your situation. I'm making a lot of this up, but it all applies. You and I are human. We have these old patterns that we were either born into or we took on when we were little kids. So you and I have stuff that needs to be pruned. And that's a healthy thing. In the same way that as a kid with Roger and his dad, I climbed up in that tree and I had a saw and I, yeah, you have to be sort of careful. You're hanging on on one hand and then here's the hand that takes the saw and you start sawing and in patience, taking your time, being careful, you're not gonna cut yourself. No one's getting hurt. No one's underneath you. And when that limb falls down, it's not going to hurt anyone. Same thing when you and I confess our sins, God heals us. You know what he does? It tells us this in the first letter of John in, in the very first chapter. He says, when we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Бог ты здесь, присутствие твое, поет сердца тебе хвала. Бог ты здесь, творящий чудеса, 
Меня зовут София, и я хочу вам рассказать о том, что, что сделал Господь в моей жизни, как она изменилась. That is honoring the Father, and there are so many testimonies of that. Uh, being a missionary, bringing the good news of Christ to people, I've seen it time and time and time again. Let me tell you about Sophia. She is a lady. When we first met, there was absolutely no life in her eyes, just emptiness, just brokenness. Um, When she was a young woman, she had dreams about a future with a new husband. She disobeyed her parents, ran away with this man, and she quickly became disillusioned. There was such shame and shock in her family when she discovered that her alcoholic husband had been abusing her daughter for many years. The whole family fell apart and was covered in brokenness and shame. That's the fruit she had in her life when she didn't know Jesus. She was depressed, but then one day she met the source of life, Jesus Christ. And she made a decision to repent of past sin and everything that was in her life until that moment. And Jesus gave her a new life, new hope her eyes were shining and she had a purpose she started serving others uh, children women and she became a leader in our church and after 20 plus years god has been moving in her family as well saving her sister saving her mother saving her daughter her daughter-in-law and working in the lives of her grandson, her son. And it's just so amazing because that's the fruit she is bearing today. Let's hear her own words, her own story. I had lots of problems in my life, many sorrows. And it was very difficult for me for many, many years. I had problems in my family. My husband and I were getting divorced and the children stayed with me. It was difficult for me to raise them, to provide for them, to teach them, and to take care of them. I was so disillusioned. There was nobody around to help me. Yes, those were very difficult times in my life. I became very depressed. I didn't want to do anything, even though I had a job. I worked as an educator at a kindergarten. But my whole life was empty. I had no direction. It was just so difficult. There was no one to help me. Nobody could show me what to do. And I was in search of what to do and how to live, how to continue to live. In 2001, I met people who were preaching the gospel at our kindergarten. They came to us and had English lessons with the kids and games and just spent some time with our children. And I took notice that they were always joyful. There were always a smile in their eyes. They loved to talk with us and spend time with us. And I wondered at that. Um, I have never met people like that. I yearned for somebody to talk to and share all my burdens. And thought that maybe it would help in my life, with my destiny, and the things I was struggling with. And thanks to this, friendship and fellowship with these people uh, that of course they were the church light for the world and they held evangelical outreaches on our grounds and 
we came closer and closer to one another and I heard them sharing about the Lord, who He is, what He wanted from us, what His heart's attitude was towards us. And I was born into this church and became part of the family. And things started to change in my life. Light entered my life and it was as if everything became lighter. The realization came that my life was not just meaningless. No, there was a purpose and I had to carry on not fall and give up, but on the contrary, to stand up, but continue and go on, so that the dreams that had been there in my heart could come to fruition. I'm so thankful that through this church I came to the Lord. I repented, I was baptized, and I started serving the Lord. Our church has a charity working with small children, an organization called Raduga, and I started serving there, working with the kids. I started fellowshipping, I noticed that there was joy in my life. There appeared a desire to do something new and do good, to bring change in the lives of these children, of my colleagues, and I'm so thankful to the Lord that He brought this light into my life, that I began serving others, began fellowshipping with others. Everywhere changes came into my life, in my relationship with my own children. I'm so thankful. Yes, it didn't come in one day, in one moment. I trusted the Lord with my children and with my other family members, and little by little change came into their lives. First of all, my sister became a believer. Then my mother repented. They started to change and I was filled with hope that the Lord was bringing changes in, in my family. I became aware how He cared for me, how He wasn't ignorant of my life and what was going on in my life. And I'm so thankful that step by step my relationship with my children were restored. They started to understand me. Of course, in the beginning it was very difficult. They didn't understand what was going on in my life and they didn't agree with this. My faith, my relationship, my ministry to the Lord. But through the years the Lord has been working in their hearts. I'm so thankful for everything He has changed in their hearts and worked in their hearts. He gave us so much and that is why I praise the Lord with thanksgiving and I live with the hope that my children and my grandchildren will also serve the Lord and we will all together glorify Him, one family. Repentance is a gift from God. And I would love to just share more and more repentance stories with you. People are realizing it's the key thing to do. As we can see the horrific events happening all over the planet, really. Hundreds of thousands of people, maybe millions have died from this COVID-19 virus. And there's all kinds of uh, storms and drought and pestilence and crime and, and animosity and anger and, and, you know, horrific events taking place. It's time to get right with God. Time this very day, you're watching this show. This is a divine appointment. It couldn't be more perfect that you're watching today. Choose Christ. Repent, believe, and then show this to others. We confess this truth, we speak, that's another word of confession, we speak that truth to others to make it real. You really wanna make it real, you then go get baptized, and as you go down underneath that water, someone's gonna help you so you don't have to be afraid, you go down in effect as the old person, removing all the old dirt, if you will, the old stuff, the old smelly t-shirt, 
so to speak. You, you remove that and you come up fresh in Christ, fresh, alive as a new creation in Christ, a new person. You've been pruned. <laughs> I hope you see the perfect, the, the, the perfect way this matches in the natural, taking a dead limb off of a, of a tree to make it produce more, to make it healthier. Same situation when you repent and you remove the old strongholds. Now, I want to share one other scripture with you. It's Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11. Now, no chastening. A chastening means a healthy warning, if you will, or advice from a loving parent or, or even a father, a loving person in your life with spiritual authority that you look up to who's of good reputation, who has love in his or her heart, that person is a needed person in your life to give you some healthy correction. It's, that's what chastening means. It's like, hey, don't do that. Hey, turn that off. Or hey, don't cross the road when it's you know an interstate highway and it's two in the morning. Yeah, you think there's no cars coming, but don't do that. Verse 11, it says, now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present. Yes, all of a sudden, if someone says, hey, stop doing that, it doesn't immediately strike you as joyful, but even painful. However, or it says here, nevertheless, afterwards, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Yes, this is how you get to righteousness. You get rid of that old dead branch, if you wish, that old sin pattern, what we are even told is a sin stronghold in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 to 5. So afterwards, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness in those who have been trained by it. And then it says, therefore, strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet. Right. Today in this world, the enemy wants you to go here. He wants you to go there. He wants you to waste your time. No, you have a straight path to go to Christ. He's got a godly plan for your life. He planted that plan in your soul when you were created as a miracle in your mother's womb. He's got a unique calling on your life. And the more you repent, the more you abide with him, the more you get rid of the old branches, so to speak, the old sins, the more he prunes you, the more you can check with him and say, what is the call that you have in my life? And he has an exact perfect call for you that will use all of your talents that he gave you. God gave you the talents. He's got a plan for your life. It's a perfect, excellent plan that will give you great, deep joy that you can't get anywhere else. The world does not have joy the way that the Lord God Almighty has joy for you. It's waiting for you if you will repent, come into the kingdom, and begin to talk to him. Just like you and I are talking right now. It's okay. You don't need to be in a church. Just start talking to him. What is your call on my life, Lord? And you will get an answer and you will get deep, deep joy. So he says, strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but rather be healed. And then this beautiful verse 14, pursue peace with all people and holiness. Yes, you and I are called. I know this means something unusual. I mean, I. Uh, Yes, we're nowhere near holiness, but we are to go in that direction. He says, pursue holiness without which no one will see the Lord. You want to see the Lord someday? Pursue holiness. So I just hope that helps you today. We, we need to teach repentance to people because they don't even know what that word means. You know, years ago when Golly, over 10 years ago, I, I started this ministry. It's called the National Day of Repentance. And by the way, the, the website is repentday.com. Please go to that website. 
There's uh, resources there for free. There's others that you can purchase. You can make a donation to keep this show on the air, by the way. And when I was opening up that um, nonprofit bank account, I went into a local bank, sat in a chair in front of this young girl, and I gave her the name of this ministry, National Day of Repentance. And she looked at me and she said, Oh, Pastor Jeff. And then she, she kind of mouthed the words, repentance, repentance. What does that mean? Wow, she had never heard the word. So we have people out there that have never heard the word repentance. You and I need to experience it and then teach it to others. Yeah, it's a gift. The gift of repentance. Now, the number one gift that Christ gave us was his own blood on the cross. That defeated the enemy. But I'm almost sure that the second best gift is the gift of repentance because that's how you come into the kingdom. That's how you clean up in your own life. And by the way, it's also the way that a church can clean up holding a repentance service a community can clean up by a number of churches coming together, confessing where they have created division or animosity or competition. It's a way that a state, through repentance, can have a day of repentance and call on the Lord. If, if his people that are called by his name will humble themselves and pray and seek his face and turn from our wicked ways, then he'll hear from heaven, forgive sin, and heal a land. So it works also for a nation. So repentance is a wonderful gift. It needs to be preached. It needs to be taught. And to teach it, you and I have to experience it. So I hope today you will do some pruning on yourself. I hope you will see the power of Christ being allowed to help you cut that off. You can ask him in prayer time, say, Lord, which is the first of many issues that you think I'm ready to cut off, them ready to remove? In the same way that a, a tree needs to be healthy, let's cut off some branches here. And he'll tell you that one to begin with. And then you have the right to choose that and say, well, would you help me? And he's going to say yes. He loves to do the pruning because he knows it will be pursuing holiness. You will be pursuing holiness even to get rid of one old dead branch. You're pursuing holiness. So please write me. It's Pastor Jeff at repentday.com or give me a call 707-350-0659. And we love to connect with you. We thank you for any donation that you would make to keep this show on, on the air. You could either make it by, on the website, there's a donation button by either PayPal or a credit card, or you can also write to Post Office Box 1302, Middletown, California, 95461. So I thank you for listening today and, and viewing and, and tell your friends, this is a gift. It's the gift of repentance. Okay, until next time, God bless you, Pastor Jeff.